Kuzuzanbo, I am H.C. Rinzin and a researcher at Center for Bhutan and Jainic Studies. As a part of the fourth international conference on Vajrayana Buddhism, we are here to speak with few of our speakers. And today, I'm going to talk with Ms. Sri Choden. Kuzuzanbo, madam. Kuzuzanbo, um, and thank you so much for inviting me here. Welcome. welcome. So, Sri Choden on my left, she is, uh, she is born to traditional Vajrayana family in Uginchuling, uh, Bumtam, and she has completed her Ngondro practice during her early years. And she is currently also a founder of Solira Bhutan, an emerging center for the dissemination of Vajrayana Buddhist teaching. Her research is mostly focused on female lineage yog and yogini practices in Vajrayana Buddhism. So recently, during the conference, she made, a, she made her presentations on the yoginis. First, let me ask you uh, about how did you develop interest in research about yogini practices? So, well, I, I should be honest. As Kalurim Bhutia, he stated in our first day of the conference, he said, as a Vajrayana practitioner, you, you know, to be a Vajrayana practitioner, you have to be honest with yourself. So I'm not a researcher and I'm not a scholar. This uh, yogini, my interest in yogini came only after I was in Italy, so I was already uh, like 22 or 23. Uh, this interest came mainly because uh, when I was in Bhutan actually, as a little kid, I was very much interested in Buddhism. It's not that I was born special or anything, but it is like, it is normal for all of yes. us, you know, to, for all the Bhutanese people. As I already said yesterday, you know, at one point of our life, we have the inspiration of becoming mm -hmm. a nun or a monk. Yes. It's just because we see our grandparents yes. doing yes. it, and then we just want to be that. So my main interest in yogini or Dakinis came only after I was in Italy, because then, like, uh, when I was here in Bhutan, actually, I was doing a lot of uh, practices. I did my uh, long chin ning and then I was doing my daily practices, many hundreds and hundreds of mantras, which took many hours every day. Yeah. But then as I moved to a big, big country, big city, life became very, very busy. It was not possible for me to do all the practices that I was doing. So then my teacher, my root teacher, who invited me to Italy, he introduced me to Mandarawa long life practice. So from there, I started getting interested in Dakini practices because uh, Dakini practices, it can be done like the longest version, you do it in one and a half hour, two hours, or the short one, you do it in 20, 30 minutes. Mm. So that's how I got interested in Dakini practices. Oh, that, that's how you continued. Yes, and after that Every I continued now. and then I started reading the books of Dakinis and of course, there are so much suffering in the life of Dakinis, but then I also came to the conclusion that we don't have to suffer yes. like them, you know, because uh, they suffered so much and they found the path. So they left everything written and yes. we can go directly to the conclusion, which is practice. Yes. So we don't have to follow their footpath by mm -hmm. abandoning everything. So women can be successful in life, have a job, mm -hmm. a career, be a mother, uh, we can be everything, and we can be a yogini. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> of course, although I have to yeah. practice myself. Okay. The other interesting thing I've always um, wondered about is, how is yogini different from dakini? In a very simple definition, so that someone like, can, someone like me can actually understand it. The, the word yogini and dakini, there is no difference. Like Kandro Yeshit Sojil, we call dakini Yeshit Sojil or Nelgirma Yeshit Sojil. So it's the same thing. It's just two different titles. But I think, I, I don't know because as I already told you, I'm not a researcher and uh, I'm not a scholar at all. I'm not trying to be humble. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the same thing. Yes. But, what, uh, but whatever you're saying is from the practice that you have practiced and you have actually learned from it. Yes, Not necessarily you have to do a complete research. No. But you, have to, you learn through all these practices yourself. Yeah, so everything that I talk about is just uh, what I have learned. Personal it's, experience. Uh, yeah, it's through my personal experiences. Uh, it's not like I do research and spend hours and hours mm -hmm. because it's not my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, 
although you said uh, you don't, uh, your job is not really to research or your not profession uh, is not as a researcher, but then uh, why do you think it is important to research or talk about uh, yogini in today's world, especially in terms of Vajrayana? Well, in Vajrayana, yes, it's very important that we talk about yogini or dakinis because uh, mostly we have a lot of confusion when we talk about uh, yoginis or dakinis, you know, because uh, as we are born in Vajrayana country, actually, uh, we have to accept that it is a path of transformation and liberation. Mm -hmm. We are not in Sutrayana country or Sutrayana path where we have to talk about renunciation. Mm -hmm. So yoginis or dakinis are uh, normally like dakini, we define them as uh, enlightened feminine energy. Yes. And uh, there are two kinds of dakinis. Uh, which is karmic dakini and wisdom dakini. Mm -hmm. So I always say we are all wisdom, uh, we are all karmic dakinis. We are born as karmic dakinis. As I already quoted, uh, Vajrayogini herself uh, in Kanjur, in the 80 volume of uh, Dege Kanjur, she quotes, wherever in this world you see a female, female, yeah. you have to consider that as my holy body. Mm -hmm. So that's our karmic. Uh, karmic dakini body, mm -hmm. that is female, and then we have our innate uh, dakini energy, which are chakras and channels. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, head chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, navel chakra, base chakra. These are all dakini energy, wisdom dakini, which can be transformed into wisdom dakinis. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> place. Talked about this eighth volume. Yeah, okay. in it's the already Yogi. written. Yeah, that, it's yes. it's it's word of Vajrayogini, so I have no doubt. Yes. She in tantric section, no, because uh, Kanjur is like the sutra, sutra section and tantra section. So in tantra section, Vajrayogini herself quotes that way. So I'm sure I, I trust that thing. <laughs> it's actually a nice message mm -hmm. to all the uh, all other men who doesn't really practice this or has gone through the Kanjur. They should actually understand. They should know what it is <laughs> that women are. Yes. Lakini, yes. So yesterday, uh, uh, some, uh, what, during your presentation, what caught me was when you said um, behind every great yogi is a great yogini, like how we say behind, behind every successful man there's always a woman. So it's an, this is a very interesting statement, but I was wondering what made you say that? Yes, uh, it's very simple, you know, because behind every great yogi, so we take example of Guru Rinpoche, for example. Guru Rinpoche, yes. Uh, he did a lot of uh, activities, he brought Vajrayana, everything, but all that he did is in union with a concert, with a female, so in India with Mandarawa, uh, in Bhutan with uh, Kandu Yishi Sojal and Munmutashi Chindran. We don't focus much on Munmutashi Chindran, I don't know why, mm -hmm. but as a Bhutanese, I think we should really do more research on her and we should bring her up, because she's kind of forgotten in the history. So all the activities that Guru Rinpoche has accomplished anywhere, uh, like uh, for example in uh, Parotakchang. So Parotakchang, uh, he transformed himself into Guru uh, Doji Drola, but then Mon Motashi Chenden is the one who transformed herself into a tigress. tigress. So he could, uh, he could actually fly to Parotakchang, and Parotakchang actually is like a, how to say, it's like a place where you are putting a landmark or a border or a wall yes. to block the, block the, how to say, in, in the biography, in the history, it says uh, Mutikpa, which means like non-Buddhist tantras. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why he transformed into uh, Doji Drolo, and we have Takchang and the Vajakilaya practice and everything, because uh, those times, I think non-Buddhist, uh, I think it's more related to Hindu tantras. I don't know, but mm -hmm. we are talking a lot about non-Buddhist tantras, which are spreading really strongly. Strong, so, yes. um, so Guru Rinpoche wanted to stop that. So it's like a nimpa. Yeah. No, nimpa yeah. means like uh, subjugating. Yeah, yeah. subjugating. So the, he stopped from Parotakchang, so it did not spread to Tibet. So all these activities of Guru Rinpoche, wherever you know, also. Yeah, I say uh, behind every great yogi, there's a yogi, uh, great yogini because mm -hmm. Yeshi Sojal, for example, without Yeshi Sojal, maybe we don't have uh, most of the things that we have now. Yes. Because she was, uh, she was really uh, very active in Vajrayana Buddhism. She's the mother of, uh, of the Vajrayana Buddhism, actually. Because uh, after she met Guru Rinpoche, then she was like a personal secretary, you know? Like uh, Guru Rinpoche was a king and then of course, even if he is a king, he uh, he cannot perform everything, right? If he did not have a 
good personal secretary, like when you say scribe, you know, uh, she was a she was his best assistant, so she wrote everything down. That's why I say behind every great yogi, there's a great it's yogi. Very, yeah, it's very true. And also all the treasures, so many nice. treasures were hidden by her, and then all, most of the teachings uh, were later spread by her. Yes. That's an in, uh, interesting perspective. I mean, mm -hmm. we have never thought about that. Um, right now you talked about uh, Mon Mon Tashikinden, where yes. people not mostly talk about it. So what, what I believe is that whenever people visit Parutakhtang, so what they actually think or uh, know is that when Guru Bhaji came here, the Tigris was actually Kanushi Sogyal. A lot of people has that idea. And then uh, at the same time, you said that not many has actually talked about her. So even though many have not talked about her, I'm just wondering uh, during your, when you, when you practice that yogini or when you went through the Kanjur and all, is there anything interesting that has mentioned about her where you, can, you could actually briefly share about her? Because I think a lot of people actually doesn't know about her. So yes, there are many versions of Mon Motashi Chindren, actually. In one of the versions, we say she is the daughter of the King Sindagyap from Bumtang. Yes. But then in one version where this is the treasure revealed by Guru Chowang, there he talks about Mon Motashi Chindren from Kurtu Kuma. Mm -hmm. So when Yeshi Sojal, she visited Bhutan, she, uh, she met uh, Mon Motashi Chindren, who was, I think, 13 years old and uh, she already saw the signs of a uh, Dakini in Monotashi Chinden, and then she gave uh, the practice of Vajakilaya, and then she introduced uh, Guru Rinpoche to Monotashi Chinden. So there's not much stories of Monotashi Chinden. that's why I say like we yes, have to do research on her. Yes. But then uh, in this uh, biography where Guru Chowang was talking, uh, there she, he says clearly that Monotashi Chinden was the one who transformed yes. herself into tigress. tigress. Uh, next one I wanted to ask you was um, how do you relate uh, the importance of yogini in terms of modern Buddhism, which is a current uh, conference um, theme? Uh, do you think that it has received the same importance as other yogi, although, although you touched a little upon on it, but maybe a brief one again? No. Women in the past always had a lot of issues, but uh, it's not because um, nowadays, I think women have uh, like more difficulty being accepted in this world of yogis and yoginis. Mm -hmm. In the past, women did not have much possibility because those times only men could read and yes. write and yes. also just abandon everything, become a monk or whatever they could dedicate to the practice. But women normally, they had to take care of the household. They could not read. They did not have the possibility to read. So for this reason, we don't have many women but then nowadays we have a big problem because uh, I find many, many, many times where women discriminate women. So when we talk about a man who is recognized as a tulku, uh, then we easily accept it. Yes. We accept it with no questions. Women, men, no matter who, but we directly accept it. We have no questions. But then when we say a woman is a yogini or dakini or whatever, uh, right away we question them. First question is, oh, she must come from a rich family. Uh, another question that we have is, oh, maybe she's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, third one is, then we say, oh, yeah, maybe she's a wife of a tulku. Yes. Or maybe we say, oh, yeah, maybe she's just sleeping around with many tulkus. So that's, that's a big problem. So it's it's the support that is missing from women, ourselves. We, mm. we really discriminate women. So as I already told you, that uh, Dakini doesn't mean that it has to be young, beautiful. You know, Dakini can be in many forms. Dakini is the source of activities, which means uh, Dakini has five activities, which are like sh Shiva, which is specifying, increasing, then magnetizing, subjugating, and then a supreme activities, which are a combination of uh, all these four. So Dakini can manifest in different forms. You know, it's not only Dakini is beautiful all the time. Mm -hmm. It depends on what activity she has to perform. Yes. So if she has to magnetize, then she can be a beautiful female version of a Dakini uh, to magnetize and you know, to attract you to, on the path of uh, teachings. Mm -hmm. Or if you have to subjugate uh, some negative uh, energy, 
then you have to uh, transform yourself into a red fool, mm. first fool, you know, it's a scary one. So it depends on the activity depends, they have yeah. to perform. So women, uh, I think we should really start to believe in ourselves first thing. As I already told, Vajrayogini said, we are a holy body of yes. Vajrayogini, yes. which means we really have to see ourselves as a potential wisdom dakini or you know enlightened dakini we have the potentiality yes, we uh, and we should not question our capacity we cannot always look outside right uh, because um, most of the human being actually we we have this uh, need of seeing something creating an idol uh, but then the reality is we already have it inside ourselves we just have to manifest it yes. through the practices so, um, how, how, uh, do, do you think that um, all these yoginis had to seek for their validation as a yogini? Like uh, how we as a woman today have to seek validation, especially in terms of gender bias? Yes, yoginis had to seek validations in everything they did, even in the past. Uh, if you read some text, like there's a very famous uh, invocation where uh, they were in you know, in this in this part where they are saying like, "Bimimiki uh, rigni you know, in this part yes. where, uh, it, it's saying like, uh, not to be reborn as a woman. Mm -hmm. So and also we have the we have the saying, you know, there is a, a difference between men and women. Kebaku, you know, we are saying these things, but. These are all mistaken. I think this came not through the teachings or tantras. Uh, this, I don't think enlightened uh, t teachers like Guru Rinpoche or any great teachers would have said that we are inferior. I think this came la much later when the men saw the potentiality of the woman, mm -hmm. that they're much, uh, they have much higher capacity than the men. So I think this came out of fear to just keep us under control, you know, because women in general, even in this modern age, you know, we really, we need to prove all the time. We need to prove, even if you go in a meeting, and uh, especially in our Asian culture, <coughs> not in the Western culture, even in Western culture, of course, they, they need to continuously prove themselves, uh, their capacity, their intelligence, whatever, you know, you do. But in, especially in our Asian culture, we have that issue, you know, uh, as soon as you see two people entering, a man and a woman, then the, naturally we prepare the seat for the man. Yes. We don't prepare for the woman. Or, uh, or, or like uh, when, um, how do you say, even you go for a meeting, if the boss is a woman, we don't credit the woman. We don't consider the woman. It's like if the boss is a, a woman and then most of our men, then they will be discussing among themselves and you will be excluded totally because somehow it's, I'm not blaming men. Yes. It is just the it's natural part that yes. actually we have accepted. Mm -hmm. It's us who has made this culture of accepting and being subjugated by men. Yes. Um, what made you say that you are a Dakini? like how you shared during your presentation. And you were very confident and told them that, yes, I am a Dakini. Uh, something on that, that's very interesting. Yes, that is, uh, that came from, yeah, I was just walking in here and then I met an American guy and then he just looked at my tag and he said, oh, what are you talking about? And I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about Yogini traditions in Bhutan and Dakini practices. And then he looked at me and he said, are you a Dakini? So I, I said, yes, and he was speechless. Of course, he remained speechless. He had no questions then. But I truly believe that as I already quoted many times, like Vajrayogini's words, you know, like where she says, we are a holy body of uh, Vajrayogini. Vajrayogini is a Dakini. She's an enlightened being. So we have the body, holy body of Vajrayogini. That's why I say we are all karmic Dakinis. And then we have the possibility to become wisdom Dakinis. So, so I am like honest, you know, it's because <coughs> when you do vagina practice, what I found out is like uh, when, um, as I already told you, you know, a little bit of my story, when I was here in Bhutan, I did my mundra, I was doing all these invocations, mantras, but I really did not understand anything much. Mm -hmm. 
then uh, then of course then life became much busier and then also as a teenager when you grow you know then then you start yes, lo I loving know. samsara yes it's it's just part you of get life distracted. it's part of life and we should go through that mm -hmm. everybody should go through that we we should love samsara to discover really there's a part to get out of the samsara then because samsara of course in the beginning you love it but then after some time it brings a lot of problems anyway like problem of five passions, right? Mm -hmm. Anger, desire, attachment, yes. you have everything. So you have to find a method to get out of that. Mm -hmm. It's not that we can r truly do it, but at least we try. So uh, as a Vajrayana practitioner, I have this confidence that uh, I'm a Dakini and you mm -hmm. are a Dakini. Yes. Because if I see myself as something um, inferior, then I don't see the reason to practice then it's, it might be my spiritual pride. But then spiritual pride, I think sometimes we need it. Yes. It's like a self-confidence when you say like, oh yeah, I'm doing mantras, then you don't know what you're doing. doing one, yes. Then there's no much sense. Mm -hmm. So when you know what you're doing, that's, that's the pride. Mm -hmm. It's the confidence. So are you saying that uh, even I am a Dakini, but all I have to do right now is practice the, practice the yogini or? How do I uh, get my uh, confidence <laughs> in myself that I'm a Dakini? <laughs> this, uh, well, uh, as a Vajrayana practitioner or on the path of Vajrayana practitioner, we are all actually in Bhutan, you know, as soon as you're born. And then as soon as you start speaking, you know, we already start doing mantras. We don't know what we are doing, but we see our parents doing it. We see everywhere, which is an inspiration, actually, yes. because uh, when you're born, like my son, he's born in, the, in Italy and he's totally a Western culture boy. And for him, he doesn't have this inspiration. Yes. For him, when I talk to him about these things, he just look at me as if I'm talking about something crazy. Yes. So when you are born in a country like ours, which we are really fortunate to be born in here, because everything, like the surrounding itself, inspires you to be a practitioner. So we start doing invocations, mantras, yes. even we don't know what we are doing, but then we are already on the path. Yes. So for, uh, for us to do the final right practice, you know, also it, it depends on what practice you are attracted to. So in Bhutan, most of us, uh, we, are, uh, we are attracted to Tara, I know that, right? Because that's what we do. So uh, then if you feel that you are attracted to Tara, then you get the initiation of Tara from your teacher, because in Vajrayana, you need a guru. So Guru can give you the introduction, teachings, and initiation of Tara, and then you start doing Tara. So which every woman can actually do it. Everyone can do it. Everyone can do it, yes. yes. It's just that we have to take a step forward and then mm -hmm. do it. And we have to have the trust in ourselves. It's, it's not like Guru can solve your problem. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, Yidam or Kanru can yes. solve your problem. We are the uh, Kanru with the potentiality of uh, becoming Wisdom Dakini, so we have to put in action. Mm -hmm. It's not about just praying all the time because praying doesn't work. Yes, we have to, to mm -hmm. practice. Okay. So uh, that was my last question. So any other comments where maybe you wanted uh, people to know about the importance of Yogini and that I may not have covered in my question? Any other comments? Well, I have no much comment because as I, as I already told you, I'm not a scholar. Uh, it's just that I would like to say like uh, CBS and Genius City team has done a great job by organizing this conference. But it's a pity that we don't have many local speakers. True. And I, I just found out that uh, I was the only female Bhutanese speaker. Yes. And I felt like, oh my God, I cannot do this. You know, I was saying, Yalama, you know, I cannot do it. I cannot do it because I really felt like it's a big responsibility that had fallen on my shoulders. Yes. Uh, but I really hope in the future, in next conference, to see more female coming up and speaking up because we really need to speak up. We should not doubt ourselves. Yes. We should never doubt ourselves. Yes. Is uh, you know, as we accept uh, tulkus and lamas and whatever, you know, as they are special, why are we not special? special yes. Yeah. Have to. But you were very confident <laughs> yesterday. The way you presented, very calm and everything. Everyone was actually <laughs> appreciating you. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And also thank you as a woman that you came forward and you talked about yogini and its importance and 
even the importance of women. So thank you so much. Thank you. So that's, thank you so much. Thank this you. was in conversation with Ms. Sinchuren who talked about Yogini. So just like how we talked about the importance of women in terms of gender bias, I think through her conversation and through her presentation, it is very clear that as much as Yoginis were very important earlier, so are we women.